This is a Final Third Podcast Quick Hit. So, I'm Rob. I'm Scott. I'm Will. I'm Mike. And we're here today with a Final Third Podcast Quick Hit. We're going to be doing a little smoking, a little drinking. Quick review, just to give you guys some insight into this stuff. Rob, why don't you tell us what we're uh, what we're doing with this today? Yeah, so today we're going to be smoking uh, the Espinosa 10th Anniversary Cigar. It's a hybrid Hamano wrapper with Nicaraguan binder and fillers. Um, we're going to be pairing this in thirds. So first third, we're going to be drinking the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. Second third, getting into the Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond. And then the final third, we're going to be getting into the Larceny Barrel Proof. Awesome. It's the C923 is the one we have here. Perfect. So we're going to cut light and we'll be back with you in a minute to some details. Well, we're just a, just a few minutes into the first third and, um, you know, we've, we've actually been pairing this with the Elijah Craig toasted barrel. And for me, I'm getting a lot of red pepper on the, on the retro hail, um, a lot of baking spices on the palate. And then a little bit, actually now I'm getting a little bit of leather on, on the palate too. Um, but with the whiskey, I'm, I'm getting a lot of that toasted caramel. How about you guys? What are you guys getting? Absolutely. Um, when I first lit it, I noticed that there was a, a kind of an almost hint of raisin with that baking spice. Okay. It was um, kind of like a, a real heavy spiced raisin cake kind of, you know, flavor to it. Mm-hmm. And then adding that caramel and toast note, absolutely fantastic. I, I, I agree with both of you. I, I did get a little pepper too on the palate with the cigar before I went with the bourbon. Um, You know, Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel, what can you say? You're going to get that rich caramel note that you expect from Elijah Craig, but you're also getting, you know, that slight little bit of toasty oak that's coming through. You kind of get a little bit of subtle marshmallow campfire kind of flavors going on. But, you know, with the cigar, it, it, it tames it down a hair. I feel, which is kind of nice, and uh, definitely get a aggressive retro hail of red pepper on on the first third. So, yeah. yeah, my my retro hair is my retro hail is a little bit of white pepper mixed with some red pepper in there too. Okay. I think the the caramely notes to me is like a like a light flan almost. Awesome. <laughs> All right, it's nice. a I know it's a weird thing, but like oh. some like the authentic you know. Flan is very, very heavy in caramel and sugar. This is almost like somebody just whiffed a piece of flan in front of your face, and that's kind of the kind of the thing that gets me between the two of them. Yeah. So hey, it works. Right. Yeah. Cinco de Mayo. So Cinco de Mayo yeah. flan. There you go. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll be back in a couple minutes and uh, get into the the second third. All right, we're back and we're getting to the end of the first third here and. I guess I'm smoking a little slower today. Somebody uh, kept me out till three thirty in the morning drinking <laughs> last night. So, yeah, uh, no way. But uh, <laughs> that being said, Rob, what are your thoughts as you get to the uh, transition here, going yeah. into, the, into the second? A lot of the similar notes are still coming through. Um, one thing that did start popping, we were just talking about. There's this um, awesome bakery down in Indianapolis called Sunrise, and uh, they've got this uh, marble toasted marble rye. It's delicious, and that's I'm getting that note quite a bit through the cigar now. And then this just adds that bit of like honey caramel to it. It's just really, really nice combination. Absolutely, I'm getting a lot of the same kind of stuff. Um, to me, there is still a little hint of kind of sweetness that makes it more cake for me than than bread. Okay. Um, but a lot of the same notes, just a slight difference in the sweetness. It could be some of the sweetness pairing from the bourbon as well. Sure. Yeah, I mean. I agree with the marble rye toast. I think it really brings a toasty quality. Uh, as far as a retro hail goes, for me at least, I kind of go back and forth. I, I'll do. I'll, I'll take one retro hail. I'll get a good blast of red pepper again. Next time, it kind of subdues. So it's kind of changing. Yeah. Um, but it hasn't quite made the the change yet for me. So yeah. I went to a little bit of fruit on on the bourbon. Okay. Um, the the toasted kind of started shifting a little bit to more of a heavy fruit note what are you what fruit do you get it's it's like a red fruit um yeah i'm with you 
Maybe like a little strawberry or something. Like definitely strawberry. Yeah, yeah as you said it. That, yeah, that's that, it. That was it's, immediately. It's a old. weird. Yeah, it's a weird thing. Like Slightly it's not super. Yeah, strawberry. not like jam, but like a fresh strawberry. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's really nice going with some of the peppery notes on the retro with this. It's, it's well, and the really one good. thing I I find with the retro hill on this one, like you were saying, you know, it it feels to be different, but I think a lot of that is if you if you blast a lot of smoke, you're getting a very you're getting more of the aggressiveness. But if you're just blowing a little bit out, which is honestly a good way to do it, just a little bit, you're just getting the flavor. Right. So that's actually a good point for people to know is, you know, when you do retrohale, you don't have to blow all the smoke out your nose. All you can do is blast your palate. Sure. A little bit of smoke goes a long way in your flavor sure. notes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Perfect. All right. Well, we'll keep smoking and drinking. We'll uh, get our next pour going and be back with you in a second. Well, we're back into the second third now, and we are pairing the second third of this cigar with the Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond. Scott, what do you yeah, know so you're getting? I, immediately, I mean, I set my cigar down for a minute and picked it back up, and the pepper just exploded. Yeah. Like, the first time I, you know, went back to the cigar, it just totally transitioned. It, it was fantastic, right? Because I love a good transition in a cigar, and it absolutely moved on me. The Bottle and Bond... I mean, this is this is one of my palate calibrating bourbons, yeah. and it goes excellent with this. Especially, I think the timing worked, moving up in proof, and the the bit more aggressive kind of just flavors that come with that. Yeah, it it made it an absolute perfect pairing in the middle of this cigar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as far as I think, I feel like the cigar paired with a Heaven Hill bottled in bond. You know, this is a hundred proof bourbon, so it's a little bit higher than with the Elijah Craig toasted barrel. Two totally different bourbons, though, from a from a palate perspective. Um, where the toasted barrel, the Elijah Craig toasted, was a little more fruity and car you know, caramelly. Uh, I get a nice a, a nut quality, more like a peanut butter fudge kind of thing going on for me. Chocolate peanut notes, I'm getting a lot of on this bourbon. Paired with the cigar, yeah. So I take a puff, I take a sip, and it's it's very nice to me. I like that you said fudge. I was gonna say like a toffee fudge, because I get the like the fudge quality in there, but not so much peanut butter, more toffee to me. Okay, uh, with with still a lot of spice on the and cigar. That saying toffee, that's actually because I'm I was sitting there thinking like a, a toffee molasses. Okay, in that in the bourbon itself with the cigar, you're just getting it really leans you towards that that toffee or, yeah. you know, the, almost like the peanut brittle without the, you know, without the heavy butter. Heavy and heavy nut quality. I mean, there's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's maybe, it's not heavy peanut, but it's, yeah, I'll definitely get a nutty, nutty quality. It's to not it. so yeah. much that I don't like it. Like with old granddad 114, I kind of, it's a little over the top. Yeah, it's not that. Yeah. It's not that. Right. It's nice, just mixes in well with the blend. So to you're me, a, you're a cooking snob. I know it. Yep. Brown butter. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That, like, Absolutely. I think that's kind of yeah. what stuck out with that toffee flavor was like a brown butter glaze. And I will sauce. say, this is the first time I've thought, well, I mean, you brought the idea, obviously, but this is the first time I've had a different bourbon with each with each third third of the cigar. And what a what a great way to drink a lot. And also, uh, also a, a really good idea because as a as a cigar transitions, you know, you may want to have that different flavor coming in, and they both kind of elevate each other. So, um, good stuff here. We'll uh, we'll keep smoking, we'll yeah. Keep drinking, and when we start to get into the uh, the final third, we'll we'll come back and we'll do our next pour. Yeah. Yeah, so we're it, finishing up the second third right now. Um, for me, I feel like the uh, the cigar is getting to be a little bit more balanced. Um, it's getting heavier. It's not okay. not the I don't think the spice is getting any stronger, but I feel like it's getting a little heavier. Like the like the uh, strength content is starting to kick up on us a little bit. The bourbon's still doing the same thing for me. It's just that that kind of caramely um, toffee kind of thing going. Very very nice. Completely agree with you. It is definitely getting to be a stronger, right? That that nicotine's kind of riding up just a little bit. Yep. Um, but the flavor's nice and consistent. It's well balanced. It's working really well with the bourbon, which I don't think has really changed much as we get to the 
the beginning of the the final third. And and just Heaven Hill bottled and bond now. I mean, it's readily available bourbon that you can get on the shelves anywhere, and at a really good price point. Yeah. And I mean, just it just holds up. I mean, the viscosity, the finish, the mouth coat. It's a great long finish. It's working well as this cigar starts to kind of mellow out a little bit. Yeah. And you're picking up definitely a more, I'm picking up more caramel now than I did in the beginning. Me too. With the, with the bottled and bond. Um, great, great whiskey. Yeah. I didn't get a whole, I, when we transitioned from the first to the second, third, there was quite a bit of change, but now like Rob mentioned, it is leveled out a little bit. Yeah. It is just way more consistent now. It hasn't really changed a whole lot since that initial second change. Absolutely. And so, I will say that the uh, the bottled and bond, great hangover whiskey. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's working for me. So. It's Heaven Hills. <laughs> it's, it's Heaven Hills hangover juice. Yeah. Struggling. Struggling. The struggle is real. So we'll uh, we'll get into this final third and uh, come back with some of our final thoughts. And we'll uh, also get into this launch. All right, we're back into the final third now. Uh, now we are pairing this with Larceny Barrel Proof. Will, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so every year, every year, we're like Heaven Hill will release Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, Larceny Barrel Proof. And the way you can kind of know when these were released, they basically give letters and then numbers, right, on each batch or each release. So the letter represents whether it's the first, second, or third release. So if you have an A, that's going to be the first release of the year. B would be second. C would be third. The next follow-up will be the numbers that follow behind that letter. And that will tell you the month of the release date and then the year of the release date. So if we're drinking Larceny Barrel Proof C923, it's the third release of the year of 2023. And it was September of 2023 when it was released. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Very good. Again, you know, when you're looking at Larceny Barrel Proof versus Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, two totally different mash bills. Larceny is a weeded mash bill. Elijah Craig's a, a rye mash bill. So you're still going to have corn. You're still going to have malted barley, but you don't have the rye and Larceny. You're going to have wheat. Um, little known fact, when Heaven Hill bought out Old Fitzgerald, Old, Fitz, Old Fitzgerald was very, you know, it was a struggling brand. It was the old timers, you know, Old Fitzgerald. We have old everything in bourbon, right? Old Granddad, Old Ezra, Old, old everything, Old Crow. So in order to kind of rebrand Old Fitzgerald, they used that mash bill and created Larceny. Um, they didn't ultimately did come back with the decanter series of Old Fitzgerald. Um, but they are the same mash bill. So, okay. so what do you think about this and, and how it's going with the cigar right now? I'm tasting it. Yeah. Um, you know, we did mash bills to get a, a rep of being of smoothing out whiskey, but this is not the case. Oh, no. not um, on this one at all. This is a, I get a blast of baking spice right off the, onto the palate. Um, totally different than Elijah Craig. And, you know, Elijah Craig C923 was a very polarizing bourbon in 2023. Um, people, a lot of people really loved it and a lot of people really didn't. And the people that didn't like it really pulled a very tannic, astringent oak note from it. Whereas a lot of people didn't get that. And rumors are out that there were actually two separate releases of C923. Um, I can't say with 100% accuracy that that's true. Um, but I know I've tried it in Indiana and I've tried it in Louisiana. And I will say that the Elijah Craig C923 I tried in Indiana was astringent. The one I had in Louisiana and New Orleans was phenomenal. Okay. So I do think there was a difference. Um, but again, with the larceny, I mean, you, what do you guys, I, I'm getting a lot of baking spice on it. Yeah, I, I think it's a little sweeter than I expected to be. You know, it's 124.6 proof, right? So we're, we're going up the line here in proof. And at 124.6, you expect it to be really warm, really hot. And it's really not, especially being a wheat. Um, and we always talk about how we're not wheat fans. This is one of the wheats that I can tolerate. Same here. Um, 
It's not super overpowering. I get a sweeter aspect on the on the palate. Um, my nose is still spicy. I have a spicy nose on this one, uh, but the palate is giving me something sweet, and it's not sugary sweet. Um, so like not confectionery. Yeah, when I when I get into this, the bourbon, you know, obviously being twenty four points higher in proof than the Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond, it's got that kind of a kick of of heat on the tongue, which then when you smoke, it it kind of cuts down some of the the heat and brings it out to be more leathery and um, more darker, like a dark bread, like very like, dark, like bread. a true rye, not the marble rye we talked about yeah. earlier. Absolutely. And we we a lot you know a lot of times we lump the word baking spice in but yeah. you know you can break down baking spice right baking spice would be cinnamon allspice nutmeg yeah clove things like that that kind of go into what you would use if you're baking right and this definitely then, falls into that nutmeg for me it i use fresh nutmeg i get the the nuts and and grate them when i'm doing cooking lots of sauces put it in there it absolutely has that um, I will say that this did go, the cigar transitioned completely away from the sweet cakey notes that I got into yeah. the bread that you guys are all talking about. And I think the pepper actually kind of fell off just a touch for me as Same. we got into the final third here. Um, I like, Mike, that you talked about the kind of on the tongue, right, with the bourbon. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or maybe, Rob, it was you, I can't remember. But uh, it definitely, when you take the drink of the bourbon and then that hits your tongue and it's got that kind of sharp you know feel to it and then you smoke the cigar it just blends really really nicely yeah, it, meshes, it kind of it meshes tones well. down a little bit it on does. the bourbon and the aggressiveness maybe from the proof or or maybe from me staying up till 3 30 in the morning <laughs> it could be. i don't know and well, i think part of that could be getting into the final third as that strength ramps up again after the second third especially yeah. with the the 10-year espinoza uh, going to a higher proof one on the final third is definitely the way to go Ooh. rather than starting backwards. And I think that goes for any pairing. It does, you know, yeah. Uh, but it's all subjective, right? Like, so most people like to start with a light cigar in the morning and work towards heavier towards the afternoon. You know, if, if that's not your thing and you want to work backwards, that's fine. You know, we say it all the time. Drink what you like, smoke what you like. Yeah, so, yeah. I, well, think, I think that when you look back at the history of larceny, I think the, prior to 2023, a lot of these higher proof weeded's, you know, uh, releases were very hot. They drank very hot. Um, wasn't my jam. I think at the end of 22, C922, they really hit it. They really turned the corner with this, with this mash bill and this age. And two of the releases last year, B523 and C923 made Fred Minnick's top five out of his top 100 bourbons of 2023. So the fact that you had two larcenies both make that in the top five, me is just amazing. And yeah. it's a testament to Heaven Hill it is. for really showing up with this with this whiskey. And of course, Mr. Sunglasses, Cocky Wolverine's talking to Fred about it, right? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I gotta yeah. drop my friend you know, right. every once you, in a you while. You put your nose up in there when you drink that bourbon? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> All right. What you guys said, you know, about the different baking spices. One of the things I get mainly on the palate from the bourbon is I get that clove. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you go back to the cigar and I'm getting that nutmeg and I'm getting a little bit of cardamom in there. Yeah. Um, Cardamom, so it, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And I that's something I've cooked with a lot. So I know that that taste again. Very familiar. It's something you know. Um, but that the way they're balancing out nicely, it definitely did the the whiskey on this one actually did knock down a little bit of the strength level of this. Agreed. Can, the cigars along, yeah. The cigars along for the ride now yes, with this whiskey. Is. Before this was kind of carrying the bourbon. Now the bourbon's carrying the cigar. Which I like yeah, that that's because great. it you know, a lot of times in the final third, it's either going to be it's the best part of the cigar or you're getting past all the flavor. And now it's just like getting to the strength. This will actually kind of cut that down nicely and actually let you enjoy the rest of your cigar. That's Absolutely. great. Yeah. So uh, I think we'll go ahead and finish out here and be back with you in a minute with our, our last final few thoughts. notes. All right, so we're back for our final thoughts. Um, this pairing actually, it came from the fact that, Rob, you're going to do a private event yep. um, with a group of people with Heaven Hill and be able to kind of walk people through, you know, what are the various, 
you know, flavors that you might want to look for or, um, you know, what, what does it mean to smoke a cigar and have a, a pairing like this? Um, certainly, if you're interested in, in having a private event, make sure and reach out. We'll throw some, some contact info up there. Um, because this is this is a good experience. I think we all kind of learned something a little bit from this. Yeah. And definitely, if if you've got some interest in this, you've got a corporate thing, or even if you just want to get together with a group of friends and and you want to have you know some insight, reach out and talk um, to Rob and and you know connect with Final Third and, and bring them out. So let's get into it, guys. Rob, final yeah. thoughts on this this whole series and, and pairing i mean honestly each each bourbon went really well with the thirds i felt um the one concern i had with being a weeder at the end was it wasn't going to hold up but being barrel proof it held up perfectly and it was a totally different profile all three of them were totally different profiles which was nice um, right now when I'm, I'm still getting that kind of clove I know, Will, you'd mentioned uh, like a citrus acidity or something in there. Yeah, like there, like a slight acidic note kind of yeah. on the very front of the palate when it's first. And then it transitions to, you know, the spice bomb, yeah. you know, from that point. Um, and I feel like what that's done is that's cut down on the spice, the spicy level of the actual cigar. Um, I still feel like the strength is up there. I feel like it's still heavy in the chest. You got a little bit of that going. Um, so it's definitely more of a medium full for sure. Um, but I don't get the amount of, uh, you know, the aggressive pepper in the nose I was getting before. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think a lot of the Espinosa line too, including the 10 year, uh, but Espinosa in general, the, the strength kind of intensifies as you get through it. You know, yeah. there are other cigar brands that are very, you know, middle ground all the way through each third. But I think Espinosa does have that kind of nailed down to, ramp up and then kind of flatten out and then kind of kick up again towards the final third. So I, I think that any, any Espinosa, let alone the 10 year is a great pairing with all of the heaven Hill line. And I'll say that, I mean, this is a really fun exercise to do with your friends at home, get a couple of bourbons out, do some pours, some tasting pours, and then follow through with the transitions of the cigar and see what happens. You know, maybe they, maybe they go well with the transition of the cigar you're in. Maybe they don't. But you kind of get an idea and you learn like what is working well with this cigar. And I think it's just, it was a fun exercise to go through. Absolutely. Sure. It was um, definitely grew with all the, the tasting notes, the acidity hit on it, your discussion about, you know, what it means in balancing these and the weeder and, and really being able to kind of carry the cigar at the end of this. Yeah. So, yep. you know, be thoughtful about it when you're doing these, these choices, kind of figure out, you know, what's going to build up and work out for you. So well, and doing, doing an exercise like this, even if you don't do multiple bourbons, the one thing I, I tell people a lot of times, because then you see a lot of people that will come into the lounge and they'll grab a cigar and they're just going to grab whatever they want to drink and don't really put any thought together on what they're actually pairing together. It really is a good thing to figure out what you want to pair. That's why I ask people when they go to the humidor, they're like, I don't know what I want to smoke. I said, well, what are you going to have to drink? And then I'm able to kind of get them a cigar that pairs nicely with what they're drinking. Um, think about that because it definitely just elevates your experience all the way throughout. I agree. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, this has been a final third podcast. Pick it. Thanks for joining us and we'll see yep. you next time. Yep. Cheers, Cheers guys. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers.